Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Siskind. I am the author of the new book, Jazz Piano Fundamentals. Whoa. Um, this is Jazz Piano Fundamentals book two. Uh, of course, I'm still offering Jazz Piano Fundamentals book one and the OG book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Um, I wanted to show you some exercises that are presented in, let's see, it's chapter, unit nine of Jazz Piano Fundamentals book two. Uh, we do a lot of talking about rhythm changes um, and improvising over the first couple measures, the one, six, two, five progression of rhythm changes in Jazz Piano Fundamentals book two. Um, and I always like to balance some amount of just telling you something really specific to practice as well as telling you something conceptual. So um, in one of the units, we talk about three different ways to think about improvising over those first four measures. It could be that you think really diatonically and you improvise only things from the uh, major scale. Could be that you think about the blues scale. way is that you really play each of the chords and usually that means highlighting dominant chords and adding in altered tones and really playing arpeggios and that I think is the hardest so I give you some specific things that you can practice and I'm gonna show them to you now um, so I think there's four arpeggio patterns here. Uh, this is the one that I've spent the most time practicing. I, I think it's just so useful. Um, and I love this because, and I'll show you here, the first arpeggio of each measure is this three, five, seven, nine arpeggio, which if you've followed my teaching, I'm a big, big advocate for learning your three, five, seven, nine arpeggios. Um, plus, we still hit the third of the G7 here. Um, and we hit the flat 13 of the F7, which is another consonant note against the bass. So we really hear the changes strongly. Thinking about the relationship between the bass and the note that lands right with the bass. So uh, just over B flat. essential finger pattern for jazz. And then I'm encouraging people because it just flows nicely to go up by whole steps. So now I'm practicing in C major. sharp I have not practiced this wish me luck a flat and then B flat hey we're back okay <laughs> like I've done this before man great exercise to practice uh, let's talk just for a second about fingering um, I'll make my camera bigger. So one of the things that you have to get used to here, um, for the first measure, if we're looking at the B flat, I keep my fingers just completely spread out nice and open. And notice that I'm always using a different finger to connect. Five, four, one, two. And then here, I can't really spread out to that whole arpeggio, so my thumb goes under. And then watch my thumb, it stays under. Okay. If I'm looking at the second one, I'd probably do the same thing. I put my thumb under.
So I'm never, well, I shouldn't say never. Um, I'm rarely playing just one, two, three, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, four, three, two, one, or worse yet, one, two, three, five, five, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, five, three, two, one. I'm never. I'm always connecting between five and four, and then either two, one, or one, two. But being able to keep that thumb under the hand is gonna give you all kinds of other possibilities. All right, so that's just arpeggio pattern one. We've got three more. Um, and so this one kind of reverses that first trend here. Uh, I'll make this bigger for you. The three, five, seven, nine arpeggios are in the second half of the measure. And they're three, five, seven, flat nine, right? Third, fifth, seventh, flat nine. Third, fifth, seventh, flat nine. Okay, and then here we're starting with, with the fifth. So it sounds like this. And just because of the way these connect, it made sense to go down by half step. Uh, Out, uh, similar fingering issues, you got want to make sure to keep the thumb under quite a bit of the time. All right, arpeggio pattern three. What does this one look like? Um, so here, this one's kind of cool. Whoa, sorry about that. Didn't intend to do that. This one's kind of cool because on the dominant chords here, we're using a minor seventh chord, a tritone away. So on G7, we're using D flat minor seven. And on F7, we're using B minor 7. I know the enharmonics are a little bit weird because we're using all flats. And then <laughs> on the B flat major, we're actually using the 3, 5, 7, 9, which make a D minor chord. On the C minor, we're using the 1, 3, 5, 7, which make a C minor 7 chord. So we're actually just going down by half steps. that minor seventh chord down by half steps. Very colorful. <laughs> I'm glad you're not seeing my fingering because some of it was a disaster. Um, but that's the idea there is that you're moving a minor seventh chord down by half steps. It's really kind of cool. Now, all four of these arpeggio patterns so far have um, gone straight up and down. And of course, music doesn't go straight up and down. We love practicing leaps. And so this is another way that we can just go down chromatically. We're starting with an F triad over the B flat major that's made up of the fifth, seventh, and ninth. And then we have an E triad. I know the enharmonics are weird, but that A flat's the same as a G sharp. Um, so that's the 13th flat nine and third of the G7. And then we have an E flat triad over the C minor, right, made up of the three, five, and seven. And then we have a D triad made up um, over the F7. So again, these are just chords, we could call them upper structures, going down by a step. Um, but now we have a little bit of a interesting leap here. Um, I'll let you see my hands bigger, even though it might be disastrous. Again, I'm connecting every one of those top notes, five, four, five, four. We really don't want, here's how to do it wrong. I don't even, I can't even execute it with 5-5 five, five with any accuracy. So 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, five, four on each of the tops of those. Um, yeah, one last thought maybe before I leave you. Well, it's not a last thought, but uh, these arpeggio patterns are in Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, and it's just chock full of a lot of stuff like that. It's 263 pages, and that was two pages of it. So there's a lot more where that came from. If anything, there's probably a little too much. But I just wanted to leave you with the thought that I introduced this as for rhythm changes, but this is the first four bars of rhythm changes, which is 
the 1625 progression. And that is one of the most common progressions in jazz standards. So it's not just for rhythm changes that you can use this vocabulary. Once you get it under your fingers, there's a million tunes that use this 1625 progression or some kind of a small variation of it. So practicing uh, this kind of thing is going to really go a long way. Um, Again, if you uh, enjoyed this video, you're really going to enjoy this book over here. There's all kinds of links as to uh, how to get it, and I really appreciate your support and uh, attention. Take care.